here on the inside. Which is a little bit weird. You could say, oh, maybe you can scratch out the metal of the, of the top, uh, but in fact, you cannot. And, and the reason is quite uh, robust. It's uh, hidden in the world topological. Topology, uh, you know, in, in this context means that there's some uh, global property of the electrons wave functions or the way electrons kind of uh, behave collectively that guarantees that there's a metallic surface state. And, uh, you know, you have to imagine that this can happen in two dimensions as well. So you can have a, like a, an insulating bulk and something running around the edge of a, of a tubing sample. And uh, so my group kind of uh, studies these. Uh, and in fact, uh, the way, so, okay, this, this, these materials have been known for a while. And what we're doing is trying to understand how they survive this order. I just told you that it's really hard to eliminate this metallic uh, thing out of the, the top or the, like the surfaces. And the insulators, we kind of look at, look more like that. To a very amorphous, very disordered, non-crystalline at all. And so that's kind of how I got into looking at aperiodic structures, uh, basically completely not periodic, uh, not uh, uh, crystalline by any means, uh, looking at amorphous systems. That's kind of what we do in, in our group. And uh, uh, well, these are the main players. Uh, also, one of the organizers is involved. Um, so, and, and kind of, we all had this idea of like, what would happen if uh, we put electrons uh, on the hat. So that's kind of what I want to tell you about. Before I, I go into the details, I want to say a few more things about topological solids. Why should you care about them? Uh, it turns out that in the realm of crystals, many materials are predicted to be topological. In fact, more than half. Uh, so these have not been uh, systematically verified experimentally, but uh, there are many that have. But these are recent predictions and recent calculations that, that indicate that this could be the case. Uh, so this includes uh, materials that you might or might not have heard about or care about at all. This mucinonide is a very textbook example. You say, what do I care about? So if you ever drank wine, you probably have uh, put it in some wine fridge or it should, uh, you know, like I'm, I don't, I'm not French, but now I, I have to <laughs> endorse. <laughs> <laughs> you treat wine carefully, so you have to store it in temperature. You need a cooler, and this cooler, there are thermoelectrics, and those thermoelectrics are basically this family of materials. So very important. Um, there's bismuth. Bismuth uh, you might not use at all, but it's kind of pretty, so it's a, it's a very nice example. It kind of has uh, uh, conducting states around the hinges, which is kind of interesting. Um, and even salt. Uh, salt, uh, it turns out, uh, it's believed to trap some charges. Uh, this remains to be seen, but at least there's a theoretical prediction that uh, sodium chloride, the, the structure, traps charges at the corners, which is uh, some manifestation of the same phenomenon. Now, how does this look really, like how do we, how do we study this? Well, we ask, ask how the electron's energy uh, kind of changes with its momentum, how, if you want, how fast they move. And uh, if you uh, look at that, you can shine uh, essentially light and like extract electrons for the, from these materials and you'll get plots like this, where I plot energy versus momentum. So I get like, uh, you know, if you want group velocity of the, the electrons in some sense, uh, you get, uh, you know, a lot of weight uh, here at the bottom, a lot of weight here at the top, and something that kind of crosses and connects this, this very uh, shiny blobs in, in a way that looks kind of linearish and, and cone-like. And this cone-like dispersion is kind of very special. It, it looks like the dispersion relation, we call this a dispersion relation, it looks like the dispersion relation of, of relativistic particles, like the photon, for example, where the energy is proportional to, to its momentum. You, you know, if you think of X-rays, uh, you know, you, they're very powerful, so they have very, small uh, wavelength, and this is kind of um, uh, very large momentum. So that's, uh, that's, that's why the energy kind of increases its momentum uh, for light. And so these, these particles at the surface of, of bismuthylene in particular look uh, really like uh, kind of uh, zero relativistic particles. You know. Now this was not the first, uh, so topological solids were actually not the first example of the Dirac, we call these Dirac cones, um, because they're, they're used by Dirac back in the 30s. <laughs> Um, in fact, uh, you might have heard about graphene. Graphene is a two-dimensional material, an hexagonal lattice of carbon atoms. It's realized uh, in the lab. And in fact, if you plot, uh, well, actually, a very good model that I'll be using in the talk, but uh, you know, if you don't understand the math, it's, it's fine. It's basically saying it's, uh, graphene's properties of how electrons propagate are well captured by, by considering electrons to have a certain probability of hopping uh, between nearest neighbors and nearest neighbors only. And uh, this hopping probability is T, so you can imagine electrons kind of hopping around uh, with certain uh, probability. And in fact, this, this, uh, this, uh, if you plot 
with uh, you know use this model to plot the dispersion relation of graphene, which is the energy versus the momentum in a certain path. In